Don't you want to ask about my arm? We're not on camera yet. Are we on camera? Yeah, we're on camera. How's the wing? Uh, got a pinched nerve. Should be fine next week. Go to a chiropractor. Going to acupuncture like I keep telling you? Pinched nerve is like more like in my back. And it keep like telling me to go to an acupuncturist. Well, I mean, it's like, it's not like I can still use like my hand. I just can't like extend my arm out anywhere. Welcome back to another episode of Shelfies. It's the most experimental beer tasting show in the world. I'm Turd Fern, the fussiest craft beer fan <laughs> in the world. The most experimental craft beer guy in the world. And this here is... The beer guy. And he's my favorite beer buyer in the world. Take these broken wings and learn to fly again. Learn to live so free when we hear the voices sing. Shout out Downtown Crown for sending this over our way. This is uh, It's Christmas Damn It, which is a variation of Jailbreak Brewing Company's Van Damn It, which is a Belgian strong ale. And it reminds me of Carrot Cake Conspiracy. I don't know if you remember Carrot Cake Conspiracy. Yeah, a little bit. It's like really holiday, feels like Christmas when you're drinking it. You start to grow a white beard. Yeah. Start saying ho, ho, ho a lot. <laughs> yeah, so this if is you believe that. This is a great that. this is a great beer. Uh, Arash of Downtown Crown calls it uh, Maryland's holiday beer. If you really like the the Saint Festivus from Brewers Art, you're really going to like this It's Christmas Damn It. Uh, the logo is really cool too. I'll show you a picture of the logo. Or you already you've seen a picture of the logo. Yeah, the, the logo is cool. The artwork's cool. Um, so shout out to Downtown Crown. That release is actually on Friday as well. So you can hit this release uh, Friday morning for Black Friday at Downtown Crown, then ho head over and get your Crowlers from Monocacy Brewing Company later that day and the rest of and the weekend. And there's a bunch of... Black Friday's turned into a big beer day. Everybody yeah, knows the big, big one day. that comes out. We have some awesome fans on, of this show, and I really appreciate when people reach out to me. They're like, hey, man, I really like your show. Uh, and one of those fans is called Daniel Nelson, and he sent us a beer from Greater Good. Uh, this is their IPA called Pulp. Uh, don't get it confused with RER Brewing Company's Pulp. This is much different. Uh, it is more of a Northeast style IPA, more so than Pulp, which is Pulp from RER, which is like a pale ale. It's Worcester County Mass, Worcester. That's really and it's great. great. Yeah, this beer is like totally legit. Wow. I don't know much about this beer. I really. I don't even know where Williamsport Mass is. Oh, this is a double Mass. IPA. I'm wrong. This is not an IPA, it's a double We're IPA. We're really off today. I feel like this show is all over the a, a juicy, hazy New England IPA. Hey, it is what it says it is. Shout out to Greater Good in yeah, Worcester. It, actually, it's Williamsburg, Mass., which I grew up in Massachusetts. I have no idea where Williamsburg is, but it's in Worcester County, and that's where I'm from, so cheers to them. Yeah. Greater Good. Next beer I'm going to leave up to you. It's a dark one. It's a dark one. This is a new shelfie. I, should be out this week or next around here. It's a new one from Dogfish Head. It's Oak Aged Syracuse Nera, and it's an imperial stout with Syrah must and aged oak barrel. So we are gonna pour this and enjoy. So this is a brand new thing. This is them, brand right? new, yeah. brand okay. new. I think it served in the tap room for a while. It did really well. People were into it, so they decided to put it out on a little bit of a limited run. Smells like it has peppers in it. it. Might be from the. He smells really oaky. You get a lot of oak. Wow, I like that. It's really good. It's like now that it's warmed up a little bit and opened up a little bit, you get a little bit more of the grape. It's almost like a little dark it's chocolate odd. covered. It's a weird beer, but it's, it works. Yeah. It's weird, but it works. Yeah, it's pretty good. I like it. It's got a little bit of vanilla from the it's, oak. It's definitely dry. Like you it's said, really finish, dry. finish is dry. Like um, dark chocolate, a lot of dark chocolate. But it has like a little bitterness on your on the tongue. I like I like that. Yeah, for from dark the, beer. yeah, yeah. this what I feel like from the malts is that dark sort of dark chocolate and maybe the sweetness from cool. the grape must. It's pretty cool. The book of love will open up and let us see. Take these broken wings. One of the newest, hottest breweries out right now. They just did a collaboration with Wet City called Joint. It's an IPA of the Northeast style right. thing deal. Yep, a little bit hazy, not hugely hazy, but 7-1. Yeah. Pretty big beer, delicious beer. It's kind of like drinking like cotton candy hops right now. Yeah, right. I mean, it's, so it's super legit. We, we've tried it. 
we like it. We're gonna drink more of it right here, right now. Mmm, holy smokes. Yeah, so I've never been there, but I've heard good things. I've stopped by on my way to Deep Creek Lake, actually. Oh, really? And I picked up a few crowlers for uh, July 4th weekend. Do you remember? It was a stout, it was always sunny. Which oh, is a yeah. beer you're carrying yeah, now? Yeah, that's right. We just got the, we just got a keg of Always Sunny in to, to put on. Oh, and look at that! And look at that! We're talking about the beer, and our man Garrett Chambers from Cushwood just rolls Super. right up on us. Tell us a little bit about Joint and what's in Joint, and also maybe a little bit about how you and Wet City kind of got together for this. Yeah, so this was our first collaboration. Uh, we haven't done this with anybody else yet. Uh, we're relatively new. We've only been around for nine months, but. Um, Wet City's owned by uh, PJ and Josh, who are two brothers, and they uh, happened to be in our tasting room one day and liked our beer, and we met nice. and made friends and decided to uh, brew something together. So we had kind of talked on and off about what possibilities there could be. Um, nice. So we hashed out a recipe that uh, kind of appealed to both of us using some things that we've done in the past, but also some new hops that we haven't used. And um, this is the result. Hot side are uh, Simcoe, Mosaic, and Kohatu, and then it's dry hopped with Citra and Denali. The malt in this is, the base malt is split evenly between uh, two row and pale malt, 20% uh, wheat malt, and then 20% uh, flake product. We're working with a couple other breweries now to possibly do some things. Um, we've been rebrewing a lot of the stuff that's kind of gone away uh, at our brewery. We're a really small brewery, we're three and a half mm -hmm. barrels, so I think we're one of the smallest in the state. In fact, last year I think we I ran the numbers. We produced 0.001 percent of the brew, the beer in Maryland. So, wow. you know, we're killing it. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, it's rushing. Slow and so, slow. You know, but it's in we, the top 100 percent. So, yeah. yeah, we um, we brew different things all the time. I get bored brewing things over and over, but there are some things that people have come back and wanted. So we're starting to rebrew some of that. Do you feel like it's difficult to keep your ear to the floor as you kind of? grind out certain beers that you know that'll sell and you like and also still trying new things too i think it's hard to balance sometimes brewing what everyone wants to buy but also getting to brew some cool styles that we appreciate that are not necessarily flashy you know given our background as consumers and then having worked in vermont mm -hmm. uh, i think that i talk, I talk a little like bit we more do about well. vermont uh, so I lived in Vermont for a couple years. Uh, I worked at a brewery called Four Quarters, uh, which is in uh, Winooski, right outside of Burlington. They have a great um, wicker store there. Uh, yes, Winooski the Beverage Bevy. Center. The be the Bevy. Yeah, that place yeah. is cool. So go to the Bevy, go to Four Quarters, <laughs> go to Mule Bar. Uh, <laughs> nice. But yeah, so uh, the guy's name is Brian Eckert. Uh, he's a good friend of mine. I worked there, learned a lot. Uh, he was instrumental in helping me learn learn things that helped me open the brewery. So. Um, I just, I, I learned a lot about New England style IPAs living and brewing in Vermont. Yeah. Scott Coleman, Marcus Thomas yes. are my partners and they get equal credit for this. It just so happens that I'm the one standing here, but right, um, yeah. you know, we all work our asses off to, to make the best beer yeah. that, that no, we guys, can make. You yeah, they guys are killing, killing it. it. We're so, really happy that you came down to, to be on the yeah. show today. Uh, Garrett had a chance to try some of these beers from earlier. Any of them that stood out to you? I thought greater. I thought the Greater Good double IPA was very, very good. Uh, super well balanced. Um, brewed technically well and then uh, the dogfish head beer was super yeah. cool really dry kind of funky from the great must but yeah. but not in an off-putting way it was as pleasantly surprised with that yeah awesome thank cool. you so much Garrett thank you so much Shelfies fans and just remember oh and Shelf happy Thanksgiving happy Thanksgiving to everybody right have feelings too <laughs> please don't call them shelf turds gobble, 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 gobble. happy Thanksgiving pilgrims <laughs>